everybody and welcome to Stitchwick Creations. This was meant to be a quick project, uh, which took a bit longer than I expected, for Mermaid. Taking this Skeleta doll, I am going to turn her into an undead mermaid, following on from my Necromancer doll. I'm going to prepare her in the usual way by sticking her in some boiling water, cutting her hair off and then sticking some needle nose pliers into the hole of her head, scraping the hair plugs out and then pulling them out. a whole lot of ick for the inside of her head. Yuck. Now I'm using 100% acetone to wipe her face off. Seems like I don't have to think of a name for this one, she's already called Katrina. Um, I think. So, Katrina! going to be using this hair from Doll's Hair Emporium and I've used this for my uh, siren doll that I did right at the beginning of the channel um, but I've got some of this urchin nylon as well which is a sort of a happier colour and I'm going to reroute this like I usually do. If you want any more details on how to reroute a doll, there is a video in my how to playlist. I will put a link in the box below. Now, to get rid of these legs, um, using my wire cutters and snipping into it because it's really hard to break with your hands. I have no idea how kids manage to accidentally snap these legs off because um, I was trying really hard. It took a while and uh, I was left with these uh, nubby bits and I had to get my Dremel tool out to drill out the holes because the pointy bits just weren't cutting it. Because I have no idea what I'm doing when it comes to this kind of thing, I've um, scribbled out a basic blueprint of what I want to do with some wire and uh, putty or clay of some kind and uh, very very roughly sketching out what my plan is. I don't stick to it. Now I have a vague idea of what I want to make, I'm going to be using this armature wire to make a base for the putty, uh, whatever I decide to use, for the hip joint so that the tail can still move to some extent. I've added a loop on the bottom to attach the rest of the tail to.
I'm going to be using these polymorph thermoplastic beads that you pour into some boiling water and it softens them and then you can turn them into a mouldable substance. There you go, colour changed and now they are wet and sticky. Um, they're still quite warm from the hot water so you have to be careful. Uh, and it's quite nice to mould but they do cool down very quickly so it's very good for basic shapes I'd say. spent several days trying various ways of making uh, the tail bones and uh, worked out eventually that more of the polymorphed beads and some bead beads bead beads uh, put, <laughs> put together uh, would make a an interesting basic tail I may come back and revisit it at some point for the base of the tail I'm doing the same thing but with some wire uh, for, for the tail fins. With the reroute finished, uh, I've done a bit of it in the darker colour like uh, a rotting fish. I didn't have to reroute the full head at the back because the hair is so thick. Um, I'm going to be trying to make her look a bit like a rotting carcass. This is pleasant. Um, so where I'm sketching out I'll be doing sort of like a more rotten texture type thing but now I'm gonna hold that hard work in place with some yoohoo glue I'm gonna start off with some pastels uh, on the more rotten side go for blacks and browns and sort of mucky tones and the less undead side, more blues and aquas, that kind of thing. I'm adding a dirty sagey green colour to the dead earth is that a word? Deader. The more dead side. And then some blues to the lips. going with the, the blues and the greens and uh, somehow uh, managed to come up with some weird rainbow-esque thing on her forehead which is quite pretty. Now I'm happy with blushing and the pastels, I shall be moving on to pencils. I 
I start off by sketching out uh, her eyes and where I want her to be looking. She's going to have a, a dead eye. Well, they're both dead eyes. She's dead. I'm dead. Um, but the, the eyes are going to look different. I keep going in with pencils and setting my progress with the MSC and building up the colours until I am happy with their opacity. Because I want the eyes to look quite sunken, I'm putting a lot of shading around the eyeball itself. I use a wet brush to lift some of the pigment either straight off the pencil or to blend it in on the face after it's been drawn in. That's really useful for bits like the lips so you can get right into the crease of the mouth. I tend to leave using black till towards the end of the face up because it's such a, a deep, more permanent feeling colour. Um, but it's lovely to see everything just pop out when you use a nice deep black colour. Now I'm happy with the results of the face up, I'm going to be using my UV resin and dotting some onto the irises to give them a slightly rounded shape and it means I don't have to put any catch lights on the eyes so I can use the natural light uh, to give it a more natural look. To give the suggestion of scales, I'm going to be using some of this chunky 
biodegradable glitter uh, as imitation scales. But only a few, because, you know, she's dead and everything. <laughs> These are a bit too pretty. I've sprayed her body and her tail with some miniature paints white acrylic and I'm going to give the body the uh, same treatment as I gave the face and give her a blushing with the blues, the greens, the greys, the blacks and the blahs to match her face. And after successfully covering my hands in pastels, I shall do the tail and use the leftover pastels on my fingers to colour it also. couldn't get the pastels into the crevices of the sculpt so I've got some watery watercolour paint and I'm painting it and pushing it around into all the crooks and the crevices of the body. And to make sure the colours all match, I'm going to be doing the same to all the tail again. Once the watercolour paint's all dry, I'm going to be using some white acrylic and I'm going to dry brush over the top of the doll, which means that I will be using the very tips of the brush to pick out the details of the sculpt in the bones.
for her tail fin I've got some of this fairy film and I'm wrapping it around the wire at the bottom of the tail bead. I couldn't find my baking paper so I'm using crepe paper which wasn't the best idea, bits of it got stuck to it but it came off with a bit of rubbing and a bit of water and it worked out fine. To seal it more closely to the wire I've put it over a flame just to help it sort of shrink back against the wire and then I'm going to go back over the main part of the fin to make it look a bit more straggly and raggly uh, because the heat will melt little bits of holes in them. Now to get her all together and ready to string. Uh, I'm going to try and lay out all the fish bones in the right order uh, of size to make sure that they, they fit and stack properly. There was no real sort of order to them other than a vague guess. I should probably <laughs> try and be a bit more accurate next time. Using some shearing elastic, because that's the thinnest I could get my hands on, I'm going to thread it first through the t bottom of the tail fin bead, and then all the way up through every single bead, through the loop at the top, and back down again, and then I shall tie a pearl bead to the bottom of the tail fin. I really should invest some time into learning how to do these things with 3D sculpting or, I don't know, find something else to sculpt it with. They're a bit chunky and they're not quite what I wanted, but this was meant to be a quick video, so I'm sorry it's not my best. I'm going to add some scattered uh, glitter for scales uh, all the way down the tail just to sort of give it some continuity from the face and it gives it a bit of a, a glitter and glamour as well. And with the last few scales she's finished. So her name is Katrina and let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you for watching, thank you for staying, and I'd love to see your feedback. Come and join us on the channel, uh, do the usual like and subscribe and all that gubbins, and I'll see you in the next repaint. Bye!